How's it going everybody? So we're back out the shop with another Shop Talk Tuesday. And in this episode, we're gonna be forging out a Quaken that is a, a smaller knife and we're gonna be making it out of 1084. In this episode, we're focused on the blade part of it. We're gonna be doing everything from the forging process all the way through to the heat treat and the actual finishing of the blade part. Next week's episode, we'll do the handle. I'll get more into why we're doing it next week in the outro. For now, sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. So this is the profile we started with. This was the drawing that I did prior to actually forging out the knife. So I knew roughly where I wanted things to go. I knew I wanted the handle to be slightly smaller than the blade. And I knew that I wanted to do a distal taper through the, the tang and then all the way through to the tip. So a distal coming from this piece all the way out to either way. 
which is what we were able to do on this. We've got that distal going to the end of the tang all the way through the tip. It's widest right here. So that ended up working out perfectly there. And then the actual profile just from forging. Perfect. <laughs> so definitely happy whenever that ends up happening to where you know I, I didn't draw this onto my anvil. Only thing that I did on the anvil was I drew the the width at the widest point and then the length. The rest of it was just referencing this drawing as I was doing the forging process to make sure that I had the right arc and the spine and that everything fit where I wanted it to be. So on this knife, the handle is going to be all the way back here. You're not going to have a bunch sticking out of your hand right there. And it's just got a nice sweep up on the blade. And then I wanted that distal so that I could leave this wider in here so that where the plunge line is, it's going to be pretty deep and stand out and be really striking. And then it's going to come to a nice thin tipped blade. So that's the whole point behind that. We are going to be doing a hamon on this particular build. So we'll have that process in this video. But all we got to do now, go ahead, go on the other shop, get on the 2x72, clean up the profile a little bit, go ahead and grind in these bevels, and then prep for the heat treat process and creating the hamon on there. Let's go ahead and jump into that. So on knives like this where I've got a distal taper running down the blade, I'll go through and I will mark the center on two different sections. So I've got the center marked right there with my center scribing tool. And then I have, let's see if we can get the focus, there we go, the tip center marked right there. And what I'll end up doing is I'll just connect those so that I have a nice center line down here. So instead of, you know, you're never going to get a perfect center line using a center scribe on a blade like this that has that taper to it. Unless you use one of the ones that kind of cants onto here, it will do its best to find the center. But if you're using one that has a setting, like an actual depth on it, I'll show you. One like this right here or even one that you put on a work rest and scribe like that, you're never going to get a perfect line all the way down on a tapered blade like this. The only ones that would probably work again are the ones that would that you kind of twist onto here and then scribe down the center. But for me, on a blade like this, I'll mark right there, there, I'll connect those centers and then go from there. We're going to use a 36 grit belt Go ahead, grind to that center line, bring those bevels up to where we want them, and then we can go ahead and start going through the other belts.
So one of the things that I like to do, and maybe some of y'all have seen this in the past, is whenever I get done quenching it, I'll bring it over to the vise, and I'll use a, a nice sharp Nicholson file, and I'll take the file along the edge, and I'll get rid of that decarb layer that's on the edge. The decarb layer will give you a false sense of softness if you just go straight from the quench to a hardness file and you bite in immediately and you think, dang, I didn't actually heat treat it right, so then you put it back in the forge and you screw up your heat treat. Take a file, come across that edge, get rid of that decarb layer. Reason why I say use a file as opposed to a 2x72 or something like that is as soon as the file starts skating, you know you're at your hardened steel. So that's what I'll do. I'll come across the edge until it stops biting, which it has right now. That's just fully skating. And then I'll take and use my you know, actual hardness file and then try it out. And I'm letting you know, I'm putting a lot of pressure on this. I'm not just kind of skating across it like this. I'm trying, I'm trying to bite into it. And it's not biting into it at all. And that's a 65 right there. So this is definitely very hard. So we're going to go ahead and do our temper. We're going to do 400 degrees at two hours. And that should be fine. Alright guys, let's go ahead and wrap this Shop Talk Tuesday up here. The close up, so this is where we're at so far. We've got our blade done. Now I did take it down to pretty much a zero edge, so it's not going to take hardly anything to sharpen it. But we got our little hamon on there, the nice forge texture up at the top, and then the ricasso area. This is going to have a really small ricasso, but you'll still be able to see some of this right here. I really like how the plunge lines turned out. I think it looks really cool. That's a cool profile. Now, when it comes down to it, the reason why I didn't do the handle scales in this particular episode is because of the material that I'm going to use. I'm going to be doing camel bone. So stabilized camel bone. And with this right here, they are curved. So they're rounded. I wanted to make sure and dedicate an episode to being able to show y'all how I go through drilling the pinholes and everything for this. Plus, we have the added difficulty of a tapered tang. It's going to be even more tapered whenever I start grinding this down a little bit to make sure everything's perfectly flat for the scales. So we're going to have tapered tang, rounded scales, light. And then we're going to go ahead and do that like all in its own episode so that I can talk a little bit more without making this episode a like 29, 35 minute episode. So with this, we're going to be working on these next week and we'll go ahead and finish it up, do those, sharpen it, some cut and test, things like that. But I really like how this is turning out. 
it is coming together how I envisioned it. And it's actually the exact profile of what I drew out on here. And I barely took anything off the profile. I mean, I spent almost no time at the 2x72 working on this profile at all. And this is the sketch. That is the knife. <laughs> I'd say that uh, that turned out perfectly without me having anything like drawn anywhere on an anvil or something like that. It was, I, I drew the profile that I wanted and then I forged that profile out. And I'm really happy about that because that's just the evolution of my forging ability. Being able to do that profile purely by seeing it on a piece of paper, getting it forged out, knowing what to do with the steel, plus being able to forge in a distal taper this way and this way. It's a lot easier to forge steel when you're making the whole thing flat. But whenever you got to center a taper here and center a taper there, it's not that easy. But being able to practice with this whole forging series that I've been doing has made it to where I feel way more comfortable doing things like this. So I'm excited about this one. I want to see it with the scales on it. Come back next week, check that out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you actually get notified when that video releases. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Guys, it's pretty much the end of this one. If y'all would, just you know, leave down in the comment section what y'all think about this and would y'all ever make one. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there and I'll catch y'all next time.